Uh, welcome to Tete a Tete, a destination for watch lovers where we, we go beyond the timepieces and discuss the fascinating stories uh, of the people behind the brand. Today, we have Raina Bernard uh, and I'm Sara Bethman and we're going to find out more about what Raina does in Van Cleef and Arpel. So uh, while I was researching you, I found uh, very little information about what you do. You're a very private man. Yes, but um, that's how I am. So um, actually, um, it's, it's a while that I um, worked for, it's like 12 years already. And um, I think the time is like a time accelerator here. <laughs> so 12 years are uh, passed by uh, in a very, in just a moment. Yes. Uh, there's so many things to do. And, uh, and actually, uh, doing all this, you're running around, you're developing, you pro uh, you're showing the product, and so maybe I have not enough time to, to show myself <laughs> yeah. to the public. Makes sense, you're, you're behind, you're puppeteering, exactly. uh, research and development. But take us through a, a, a normal day of a research and develop, a researcher and developer. So take us through like a standard day at the office. Standard day, so you arrive in the morning, so actually, um, first of all, you go around and say, Good morning to everybody, <laughs> yeah. which is very important for us. So we do that. So there's a, a time where you go around, you say good morning. You actually look into the face of the people and say, yeah. how are you, right? Yeah. So this is very important. Um, and um, this is an important start for the uh, to see how it is everybody. So then we have meetings. So we have um, development meetings. There are different types of meetings. There are meetings where we talk about technical yeah. elements very much to the detail. There are meetings where we talk about stories, um, which are always at the beginning of the valley. There are also meetings which talk about um, logistics, um, oh, yeah. um, customer problems, um, IP problems and all this. So there's also the administrative part, which comes with every work, I think. Yes. Yeah. So, um, and, um, so in the days goes by like, Okay, well, well, that's a good a good uh, synopsis of how a day goes. Um, so, in your opinion, what is now in the watch industry? What is the most innovative uh, development that has happened over the last last ten years? I can see that. Um, I can let me talk about what we did. Yes. So, because I don't know exactly. Um, um, one thing I realize is that um, we we are innovative with our respect to. Métier d'art, métier d'art, which is a craft. So actually, uh, enameling, for example, ex exists in some yeah. very, very long time. And you might say, hey, this is enameling. It stays always the same, but what do you do? And actually, a lot of things are going yeah. on. So different techniques, development of techniques, refinement, uh, new colors, etc. Actually, uh, um, enamel in 3D, creating volumes, combining different materials, so a lot, a lot of things going yeah. on within a zone where you think, oh, there is nothing more to do. Yeah, and you it's, think it's maxed out. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely not true. Yeah. So I think we did a lot uh, of that work. Um, many, many things happen for the integration of jewelry and watchmaking. As you know, we like to we like to blend yes. uh, high jewelry, jewelry and watchmaking into the watch. So you cannot imagine how many ideas we still have and uh, where we want to go with this blending. Uh, you can see some of the products that we made, which also show. So uh, when you're when you're brainstorming these ideas, I can imagine they go crazy, and then you have to like rein it in, rein it in a little bit. <laughs> but what I wonder is, has there ever been a moment where I think I think it was Steve Jobs who said something like, uh, when they created the iPod, they put it in. in desk drawer so they're like the world is not ready for it right now so has there been something uh, in your in your you know tenure at Fenty where you're like you know what the world is not ready for this creation so we'll park it now um it may be but I cannot talk about it not because I will, <laughs> <laughs> it will come out in a couple of years <laughs> but what I can tell you is uh, the moment is um, when whenever we talk about the story um, and we really start with the story. There is no, we are not technology driven where you say, okay, we develop a technique and then we think, what can we do with that? No, it's really, we talk about the story and once everybody is okay with the story, we say, wow, this is it. We want to do that. That's the moment where we have to think about how to do that. 
because sometimes we don't know. Yeah. <laughs> we don't know how to do it. And then we start developing, we start doing pre studies, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And then with the with the creative team, we actually move around the story and the technique till we arrive at the product which we can do. Well, so, so, so your creative your creative approach is it is it more research driven or is it more storytelling driven when you're when you're designing or trying to develop which takes precedent? Um, the story. The story. Very very clear. Hundred yeah. percent. We have a story. We think, wow, this is. Cool. Take the story for the alpha one to indicate the time, yeah. like uh, with flowers, just by flowers. And so we say, you have one flower, it's one o'clock, two flowers, two o'clock, three flowers. So we've been fascinated by the story, but then there is no book that you can take out and you yes. open and say, how this to design a uh, floral. Yeah. It doesn't exist. Like a chat GPT for it. <laughs> well, so actually, actually, it's really the story first. And then whatever we do, typically, whatever research we do, whatever, um, aesthetical research with you, our colors we have to define to invent. This is in function of the story. This is the, the story drives what we do technically. Yeah. When we have patterns, the pattern is um, a result of an area where we went, which was not explored because the story wanted us to go there. That's how it's done. So it's really the, the technique and the, the development, technical development is really the service of the story, absolutely. Yeah. So it's like a theater. You got your little actors. Actually, I like really much that uh, that approach. I compare what we do. I'll watch it with an opera. I'm a big opera fan. Oh, so yeah. yeah. Maestro. So <laughs> and um, and so what you what you want to see is the scene. Yeah. Uh, you want to see the singers, the actors, the music, but you don't want to see uh, cables, hydraulic pipes, and stuff like that it's moving things around. So. All the technique is in the background to have the story in the foreground. This is this is what we do. That's actually really really nice, and it really does emphasize your stance as or the company's stance as uh, poetry of time. Uh, and with that mindset, I'm assuming um, you look. You're you're very insular as a brand. I think you look inwards. You rarely do look outside at, uh, to see what's happening or to see what trends are coming up. Um. If I'm honest, not really. Yeah, yeah, so it's, it's <laughs> yeah we, we're not looking outside. We, we, have, um, we have a pool of ideas and I can say is there's no meeting where we sit down and we think about how can we create new ideas. New, yeah. Ideas pop up during the whole uh, development of whatever we do. And yeah. we do develop something and then we say, wow, we could add this. But then, oh, maybe not this time, but we take it away. So we put it into the yeah, drawer, you know what we're talking about. <laughs> so, and then and then there is one time where we pick it out and we recombine it and we say, wow, this is cool. Now the time is ready to do something like that. So, and, um, so that's, that's, how, that's how the ideas are created. Um, and then taking these ideas, we go and develop. So we're not looking outside. So what are they doing? Yeah. So we have to do the same thing. Yeah. Not at all. So your your inspiration is very much within within the machine. Your within our team. play field, within our you know we love poetic astronomy, yes. nature, plants. Uh, it is a romantic. Very romantic. There is, and there's so many stories we like to talk about, and our problem is rather. What, what which one do we start to With develop? First. Yeah, yeah. This is this is rather the problem. So how do you solve, like if you're in a meeting and then there's three great stories, is it a voting system that the uh, rock, paper, scissors system? Um, I think um, I think it's within the feeling of the team and um, it's like when you travel, I compare it to traveling, right? So if you travel with uh, three partners and the three partners are, this is like marketing, mm -hmm. the creative studio and the development. So imagine this couple of three travels and you have to decide, do we go there, there or there? Finally, find a solution. Yeah. So it's, it's coming out of the team that says, okay, let's start with this one. And of course, Nicola Vaz plays an important role in that because he's very much integrated in this. And then we decide together to go that way. Okay. And but the good thing is, if we go that way with the story, it doesn't mean that we don't do the other of one. Of course, it's us, so it's just um, it's <laughs> yeah. just maybe laid back a little bit. It's you know? true. And you know, uh, with the way 
Well, I know, I know. We, we look inside, but if we were to look outside, it's not coming from a not speaking from a Van Cleef and Arpel uh, perspective. But if you look at the industry or the way things are happening, there's a lot more of uh, the, the consumer being involved in the creation yes. of the product. So, if you were to prophesy the next hundred years of watchmaking, do you think that the designers? position would actually be the consumer more the consumer being in your seat um well the consumer in, in some kind the consumer is already in the seat because he he's actually buying product right so if you can see you design something which which you cannot sell so you maybe will not go that way next time yes so this is the first thing i think the consumer is already in the seat yes but on the other hand um maybe not all the consumer want to be in the seat mm -hmm. i think uh, some people like to just to consume a product which has been thought by somebody else. Um, not everybody is a painter. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so you like buying paintings, um, but you don't want to paint. Yes. So we have this type of clients also, you know, that actually accept a beautiful thing and they say, wow, this is awesome, I could never have done yeah. that. And then we have also clients, and this is already the case, uh, which are actors on yeah. design because they will call the special command. We say you need pieces that we will make for the people. And um, from time to time they have vague ideas and from time to time they have very precise ideas of what they want. Yeah. Yeah, and they even talk about colors, they talk about stones, they talk about... Really, they, they, do, uh, they do a lot of um, um, they're, they're uh, creating, thinking yeah. and creating. Yeah. They're creating what... So finally it's the studio designing for them. Okay. But they are very active, so it happens. So you have from from you have the, both not at all the all the way to all the way to very active. So I like to start with this piece here. Um, it's called Ludo Secret. It's a secret watch, actually, um, and it took us seventy three years to remake it. <laughs> seventy three years because <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, actually, um, it is a piece that we made uh, in uh, 1949 already, and we revisited the piece and we actually modernized the design of this piece. It's a secret watch. So actually, when you press the two the two elements over here, you can see that the lid open, right, and give you actually access with your eyes to the dial to actually see the top. Um, this is the element from the Ludo bracer that we took. And actually, the design is made in a way that you have the impression that the bracelet is actually, actually going through. Yeah, that's true. It's a beautiful piece. It's a um, perfect blending here of jewelry and watchmaking. Yes. And um, so we have all the, the jewelry codes. And you don't even see when you wear the watch like this, you don't even see that it is a lot. Yes, yeah, it looks like a, it looks like a jewelry field. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Then the second one I'd like to present you is the Père des Ponts motif. So um, we started um, actually um, in 1912, we had the first pendant watch. So we have a, a long tradition making these pendant watches. So what's interesting is that the dial, um, you can see it, it's upside down. And you see it from the front. So actually it's done in effect that when you wear the watch, you actually flip it up that way so that you can actually admire the time. It's actually a watch, watch for you, yeah. not for the other person. So it's also a secret watch because we like to, like to play with it around, you know. So we have the sliding um, lid actually that actually rotates around an axle. Here, this is the version with emerald, yeah. you know, uh, which is perfectly set. And when you look at the back side, you can also see the opening of the all the elements. So all the stones are uh, ajouré. So there is an opening, and every opening is a little bit different, and very much um, in accordance to what we do in general. So it's actually, stunning timepiece. Yeah, so I love I love this a lot, and uh, you wear it around the neck. You know? Yes, this beautiful uh, chain that comes with it. Yes, it's beautiful, honestly. Thank you. Uh, the third piece, um, this is um, poetry complication. Those are my um, Actually, what it is, I can show it here to the camera. So what it is, is actually you have a ferry on the on the dial. We like ferries, like the, since the 40s, ferries and ballerinas um, are important in, 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 in products. 
So you have the fairy on the watch, and the fairy actually has a magic wand. Oh. And with that magic wand, the fairy actually indicates the, um, the minutes. So when I turn the crown here, you can see actually that the wand is actually moving back and yeah. down. And um, in the background, you see the sun. Here you have the sun. And actually, it's um, it's um, the fairy is actually in the late afternoon, um, <laughs> sitting on the clouds. So you already have the sun going down. Yeah. You have the this pinkish tonality is in the sky, and with a magic wand, a fairy indicates the minutes and actually the sun. In the sun, and you can see, you can discover the hours of the village. But very interesting here. You can see the, um, the enameling technique yeah. that we use for the wings. Um, you can see the bodies, um, stone set with our sapphires. And if you look with the magnifying glass, I invite you to do that because each sapphire is held by metal or grains and yeah. holding the sapphire. And to enhance the beauty of the color, we add with miniature painting on the top of the grain holding the sapphire a little bit touch of a pink and there are three different tonalities of pink on that little fairy so and this is really our love to the detail yeah. we go really much all the way down yeah um, take care of every detail the back side also i'd like to show you uh, yes. we have a full oscillating weight swirling around so why don't you see the, why don't you see the movement because i go back to that opera idea uh what we want you to see Really the, art. the art, the stage, the dial, the mitida, mm -hmm. the craftsman, the craftsmanship, uh, which is actually the base for to make a beautiful dial like this. Uh, this is in the center and not the movement because it's in the back. Yes. Uh, moving everything around. It's stunning. Can you kindly present uh, the, the next batch of Perle novelties? Absolutely. So we have the, um, the small uh, Perle watch over here. As you know, the Pali watch, um, we take the idea from, from the jewelry that we made in the early days of the company. So beads, golden beads were always a part of the um, jewelry. So now we have a watch here which has a two rings of beads perfectly around and um, a dial uh, which actually is a signature dial because it's um, Gyoshi. So it means here in gold. So actually, the dial actually reflects enormously the light. Yes. You, know, you can play around with it uh, within that uh, watch case, which is perfectly um, beaded, if you want to. Um, so it looks really beautiful. It is a beautiful piece. Yes. And then we have um, this version. Um, it's a 30 millimeter diameter. It's a little bit bigger. It has um, a dial uh, out of Mother of Pearl. And here we did the same thing. We did yeah. Gyoshi, the dial. So you have really like a 3D structure in the dial. Um, rose gold pieces. We made them for the first time in rose gold. Also, if you look at these rings of beads, yeah. very beautiful all the way around. You know. And sorry, what was the this this size? It's 23, and 23. this is 30. Okay. Right. Both of them come with uh, interchangeable straps. Okay. Here we have the small version with the bracelet, which uh, where you can also find all the beads on the bracelet. So on on all the different elements, you find the same beads. You know, as on the side, and actually it looks really, really beautiful on the wrist. It's stunning. And um, also the play with the light um, actually is really well done here for the in, in the in the bracelet. So again, a piece of jewelry yes. that uh, that we created here. It's beautiful. The perfect honestly. blending of watchmaking and jewelry. Yes, exactly. Jewelry that tells time. Jewelry that tells time, exactly. exactly. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome.